That's strange tutoring? Hey guys, welcome to today's video. We'll be going over the gay Lusax law. If you guys haven't already, I know I sound like a broken record, but please go ahead and check out the other gas law videos and gas properties where I go over the properties of gases and Boyle's law, okay? And I just want you guys to check out those videos just so you guys are familiar with some of the terms used and, you know, there's no confusion there. But I will give a brief overview of what a gas is. So for this law, it is the relationship between pressure and temperature okay and all these schematics that you guys see here we'll go over in future slides so I took this right out of my favorite book um, it's a chemistry book by Karen C Timberlake so shout out to uh, Karen <laughs> um, this was my favorite part of the concept map because it kind of gives us an idea of where we're at with this whole gas law thing and of course you guys will be experts by the time you guys are done with this video and the many other videos that I have coming out. So we know that gases can be described by the kinetic molecular theory, which are, uh, you know, a set of characteristics for a gas, you know, so such things as they are far apart, they move very fast, and they exert pressure. And they behave according to these gas laws. One that we already talked about was Boyle's law, which is the relationship between pressure and volume while temperature is constant. Right now, we're talking about the gay Lussacs, where pressure and temperature are in this relationship. Granted, uh, volume is constant, okay? So if we look over to our side here, again, my favorite container. Again, repetition, repetition. You guys will hear this over and over. You guys will remember this for the rest of your lives. Pressure is exerted when particles hit the walls of a container. So this is a closed container. And what we have is, let's just say any particle, CO2, any type of gas that we can think of that's in this closed container, what happened is they're moving so fast and they hit this wall and then they bounce back out. And every time they hit a wall, they're redirected and they exert pressure. Okay. So Gases, ex their pressure is exerted by gases in the container, and this can be influenced by the volume or temperature. But again, we're just talking about temperature here, okay? So if we go over to our next slide, here's more detail, again, relationship between the temperature and pressure. So um, I'm very big on understanding the concepts because later on what you guys may see on quizzes and exams are there's gonna be these long word problems with a whole bunch of garbage but all you have to do is look at that paragraph or that word problem, dissect it and figure out which law you're going to use. And, you know, you understand the concept first and then you figure out which equation you'll use. So, so far, we've already went over P1, V1 equals uh, P2, V2, which is uh, Boyle's law. And for the sake of this law, we're talking about p1 over t1 equals p2 t2 okay so again the pressure of a gas is directly related to kelvin temperature and notice how i said directly here you know in the whole Boyle's law thing it was uh like uh directly proportional inversely you you'll hear all these different words that they say and that just means when one goes up one goes when one goes down one goes up and vice versa it's really this vice versa type of thing because we know that when pressure decreases that means volume has increased and if volume has increased pressure decreases but for the gay lussacs law i would say they are copies they're twins they do what the other does so when temperature goes up pressure goes up cool right now get this guys what happens when temperature goes down well, when temperature goes down, pressure goes down. You guys deserve an award, a cookie or something, <laughs> because this is what it means. It's directly related to the Kelvin temperature. And again, this is with the idea 
that the volume and the amount of gas is constant in that container. You guys got it right, container. Just remember container and you guys will pass the final. So now if we look over to our schematic here, you can see that we have um, this container, quote unquote, it's really a flask, but you know, it's something close. When we say container, it means it's something that's closed, right? So we have an ice bath here and the pressure is one atmospheric unit. In this second one, we have boiling hot water, just hot, you know, like the sun. Well, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, not hot like the sun, but it's hot. And you can see the pressure is 1.37. 1.37 is greater than 1.0. And why is this pressure greater? Because this is boiling water, the temperature is increasing. The temperature is higher in this than it is than uh, this flask. So you can see temperature does play a big role on the pressure within the container. And if we go over to our right, shout out to Baijus, whoever they are, but I took this image from them and it looks very nice. You can see that the pressure here, it says four. I don't know, it doesn't have a unit, but you can see the pressure here on the gauge is four and the pressure on the gauge here is two. And the reason being is we have a flame, we have heat or a temperature increase here that influences the pressure. So when you have a temperature increase, these uh, particles, they move much faster. Remember when you boil water, right? Those gases are already moving rapidly and as you increase the temperature, they move even more rapidly. So there is an increase in the amount of times that this gas hits the wall of the container. And with that, that increases pressure, all right? So again, just a quick look here again, directly related. Temperature goes up, pressure goes up. Temperature goes down, pressure goes down. And this is all put into this equation, P1 equals, P1 over T1 equals P2, T2. Now, I believe there is an example in the next slide, and I'm right, you guys owe me. So in this example, we're going to use Gay-Lussac's law. So let's read it out. Aerosol containers can be dangerous if they are heated. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to underline any type of numbers that I see or things that, you know, um, grab my attention. Because all this other stuff I call garbage. Well, not really. Um, you know, just to kind of throw you off. Aerosol containers can be dangerous if they are heated because they can explode. Suppose a container of hairspray with a pressure of four atmospheric units at room temperature of 25 Celsius is thrown into a fire. If the temperature of the gas inside the aerosol can, re can reaches 402 Celsius, what will be the pressure? The aerosol container may explode if the pressure inside exceeds 8.0 ATM. What would you expect it to explode? Well, would you expect it to explode? So would it explode? We don't know because we have to find out the pressure if it would be greater than this eight atmospheric unit. So how will we do that? We're going to use our P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2, okay? So let's look at our conditions. First and foremost, we're going to have to convert these temperatures to Kelvin. And to do this, we're going to say T1, well, actually, what we'll do is this. We'll do 25 degrees Celsius, right, this here. And then we add 273, and that's how we convert to Kelvin. We just add the degrees Celsius with 273, and we get 298 Kelvin, then we'll do another 25 degrees Celsius. And this is for the 402. So we'll do plus 402. And if we punch that into our calculator, we should get 675 Kelvin, okay? So in the last video, I talked about conditions. So we want to go over, uh, you know, what was given, what we're looking for so we can isolate our variables and cancel out. So I'll just write out condition one, condition two, the no, 
in the predict. And I think this map will help out, especially for like, you know, beginners, okay? So condition one. So this would be this side here. So we have P1, T1 equals P2 over T2. So this would be this side. So we know that the initial pressure, which is P1 equals four atmospheric units. And the initial temperature, T1, we know equals 298 Kelvin, which is also the 25 degrees Celsius that we converted. So we'll say 298 Kelvin. Condition two, we're trying to figure out if this new pressure will exceed eight, eight atmospheric units. So the P2, that's what we're trying to figure out. So we don't know. The T2, or the second temperature we got is 402, which comes up to 675 Kelvin. So we can say 675 Kelvin. And so what do we know here? We know that there was a temperature increase. We went from 298 Kelvin to 675 Kelvin. That's a temperature increase. So we know that the temperature increases and what is our prediction? Because we know that if temperature increases, pressure increases. So we can predict that the pressure will increase. Okay, so if this was a multiple choice, you know, this would be very easy. You can, you know, if it said, does it increase or decrease, you can just instantly say increase. But we want to know also what the pressure will be. So we answered, um, well, we didn't answer this question. The question we answered whether is whether the pressure will increase. So let's go ahead. And now we are going to set up our equation, which again is P1 over T1 equals P2, T2, right? So we're looking for P2. So what we're going to do is isolate that condition or that variable. And we would do that by doing P1, T1 times T2 equals P2 over T, T2 times T2. So we're multiplying, uh, we're just going to multiply to both sides so we could cancel out the like conditions. And what we're left with is P2 equals P1 times T2 over T1. All right, so it'll just be this area that's left over and we can form it into this equation. So now what we'll do is go ahead and plug in everything. So our P1 is what? P1 is four atmospheric units. So we'll do P2 equals 4.0 ATM times what? T2, right? Oops, I'm sorry. This actually would be T1 at the bottom. I just noticed what I did there. This would be T1. So we're going to multiply by T2 and T1. So T2 is going to be 675 Kelvin, right? As said right here. And then T1 would be 298. So it would be 298 Kelvin. And if we punch that in our calculator, we'll just do 4 times the 675 divided by 298, and we get 9.1 ATM. So remember, initially, we're asking if it exceeds 8.0 ATM, would it explode? And yeah, that thing, that can will definitely explode because we got 9.1. So the temperature did increase, so we know that um, the pressure increased, but will it exceed the 8.0 ATM? And it surely does. So it indeed will explode. And these are some um, examples that you guys will see in some of your exams and quizzes. I highly recommend looking up some other examples um, on the internet. And I think I'll do a whole video, like a very long video of examples for all of the gas laws uh, coming up later. So let me know what you guys think, if this was helpful. Uh, if you guys have any questions, do not hesitate to comment, and I'll see you guys next video. Peace.